So we've been looking at graphing trigonometric functions. We've been looking at it with different translations, reflections, stretching, um, and now, and vertical shifts. And now we're looking at it with horizontal shifts, which are called phase shift. And so let's just write down the formula. So if we have y is equal to a sine of bx minus c, and that's in parentheses. So our argument is bx minus c plus d. And so we have this horizontal shift in here because of this plus or minus c. So recall if you are adding or subtracting a constant, so f of x plus c, where c is bigger than zero then this shifts f of x to the right, sorry, not to the right, to the left c units. And if we had f of x minus c, then this shifts to the right. C units. So depending on what that value of C is depends on if we're going left or right. So when we're graphing these and they're giving us the equation, I would just set it up like we were doing before. We were sandwiching our argument for sine and cosine between zero and two pi. And then we were isolating that variable X in this case in between the inequality. And so let's do the same thing. And that makes our life a lot easier when we are graphing these. But when we're going and given information and we need to find the equation of the line, then it's helpful to know the following, that the period is equal to two pi divided by B and the phase shift so how much we're shifting it horizontally this is equal to c over b and let's just put this in here for now amplitude we can find the amplitude by looking at where is the maximum value our graph hits minus the minimum value, where our graph hits divided by two. The other thing that's helpful is for vertical shifts. If we were looking at the graph and we wanted to find the equation, we can find the vertical shift if it has someone by looking at the max value plus the min value. Think of it as we're looking for the halfway point between that max and min. So think of it as like we're averaging it. So max plus min divided by two. So let's look at a couple of examples of graphing and then we'll look at some examples of trying to find the equation or there's actually an infinite number of equations that would fit the data. Um, so looking at the following, Let's say we have y is equal to 4 sine parentheses pi x plus 2 and your parentheses and then minus 5. So looking at this graph, I can see that our amplitude, our amplitude is our coefficient that's multiplied to that trigonometric function is four. It's the absolute value of that, but absolute value of four is four. So our amplitude is four. 
So normally without any vertical shifts, our max is gonna be four and our min is gonna be negative four. But I'm looking at this and I can see that we have a vertical shift in here. We have this minus five. So we're shifting things down five units. So we're shifting four sine of pi x plus two down five units. So if I'm shifting things down five units and I know before my max was four and I subtract five from that, I now know what my new max value is. So my max because of this shift, four minus five is gonna equal negative one. And my min, which before was at negative four, shifted down five units is now at negative six. When we're talking about max and min values, those are always talking about the y value of that coordinate. Okay, so now let's look at our shifts. Is our period changed? Are we moving this horizontally? And so we're gonna look at our argument, which is this pi x plus two, and we're gonna sandwich it in between what a normal period would be from zero to two pi, one of our cycles of our period. So we have zero is less than or equal to pi x plus two is less than or equal to two pi. So we're trying to get x by itself. And so the first thing that we would do is subtract two on all sides of our inequality from the compound inequality. And we would have negative two is less than or equal to pi x is less than or equal to two pi minus two. And then we're gonna get rid of the pi in front of the x by dividing everything through by pi. So we have negative two divided by pi is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to two pi minus two all over pi. So we know what our start value is. We have a start value of one of our cycles at negative two divided by pi. And we have an n value of two pi minus two all over pi. So once we found our start and our n value, we then looked for our half point, quarter point, and three quarter point. So looking at the halfway value of this period, what we do is we look at the start value, which is, let's just put this half, which is negative two over pi. I'm sorry, no we don't. We look at our, our n value. Sorry. <laughs> Let me just think about this for a second. If I wanted the distance, I would look at the end value minus the start value. I want the midway point. So actually I can start with the, the start value. I'm gonna look at negative two over pi plus this two pi minus two over pi. Think of it half, I'm averaging divide that by two, or because we're dealing with fractions, instead of dividing by two, let's think of it as multiplying by one half. So right here we have a common denominator. And so let's add what we have inside our parentheses. So we have negative two minus two. So we have two pi minus four all over pi. I noticed that I can factor out a two in my numerator and then that would cancel with a two in my denominator for the one half. So if I pulled out a two there, I would be left with two times pi minus two all over pi. So these twos cancel 
and we're left with this is equal to pi minus two all over pi. So let's look at our quarter way mark. So that we're gonna take our start value, which was negative two over pi, plus the halfway mark, which was pi minus two over pi. And we're gonna multiply that sum by one half. And so looking at this, I have negative two minus two, which is negative four. So I have pi minus four all over pi, all times one half. So this is the same thing as pi minus four all over two pi. One more value we need to look for, and that's our three quarter value. And so let's find that three quarter value by looking at our halfway mark, which was pi minus two all over pi, plus our end value, which was two pi minus two all over pi. And we're multiplying that by one half. So adding what we have inside our parentheses, we already have a common denominator. We have pi plus two pi, that's three pi. Negative two minus two, so that's minus four, all over pi times that one half. So we'll just have a two down here in our denominator with that pi. So our three quarter value in this case is three pi minus four all over two pi. So they're, they're kind of ugly values of what they look like because there's a, a fraction and a sum of pi and a constant, which pi is really a constant and, and dividing by pi or two pi. But as we just did before, let's just make our tick marks. The thing is, Let's just think about this for a second and figure it out. I know negative two over pi is, is gonna be a negative value and that's gonna be on, so the negative X axis. But let me pause for a second. Okay, so I just plug these values into the calculator, kind of get a better idea of what our start quarter, half, three quarter end value are and they're right in here. Um, and then there's an error up in here for our minimum value. Our minimum value, remember, um, our, because of that for our amplitude, our minimum value before the shift was negative four and negative four minus this negative five, this should have been a negative nine. Okay, so, we now know where one of our start of our cycles is. We know um, which is our about negative 0 0.64 or negative two over pi. We know another value, which is gonna be pi minus four over two pi or approximately negative 0 0.14. And then we had 0 0.36, which is pi minus two all over pi. And then we got this three pi minus four all over two pi. And the last one was two pi minus two 
all over pi. So let's put in our max value. Our max value was negative one. I'm gonna put negative one down here. Although let's not put negative one down there because then we have to do negative nine. Okay, so negative one. I'm going down to negative nine. And so our midway line, which would have been like our x-axis if we didn't have a vertical shift, well, we're shifting it down five units, the x-axis, well, it's like the x-axis. So it's gonna be at y equals negative five. So I just put a dotted line there kind of to treat it like it was the x-axis. And so I look at what type of trig function I have, which is sine. Sine starts at the midway line. And so our start was at negative two over pi at the midway line. My coefficient in front of the sign is positive, so I'm gonna increase first. So at the quarter way point, I'm hitting negative one. At the halfway point, I'm back down at the midway line. At the three quarter value, I'm hitting negative nine, the minimum point. And then at the end point, I'm hitting the midway line again. And so we get a graph that looks similar to this. So looking at this, we can look at our phase shift. Oops. Our phase shift is what where we're starting here, one of our cycles. And so we're not starting where sine is normally um, at the origin, but we're shifting it horizontally to negative two over pi. So our phase shift is two over pi. to the left. Our period, we can find our period by looking at the n value of one cycle. So in our case, this is two pi minus two over pi minus the start value. So minus a negative two over pi. And so looking at this, I have a minus a negative. So that's really gonna be a plus. So we have two pi and then minus a uh, negative two plus two, those are gonna cancel all over pi. And so we see that this is two. If we had used our formulas that I had given us before, we would have looked at two pi divided by b. Our B value in this case is pi, two pi divided by pi is two, which we got here. And if I looked at my phase shift, which is C, looking at my graph, because C is in the form, it's kind of the opposite side. So C is negative two divided by B, which is pi. So negative two over pi, which we can see is where we started. So other questions that you might be asked when graphing is what is the domain? Well, we have a sine function, so our domain is all real numbers. What is the range? So to get the range, we're looking at the minimum 
y value that we're hitting up to the maximum y value we're hitting. There's no jumps in the graph there. And so our range, it's gonna be between negative nine and negative one. And if we put that in interval notation, you're gonna use brackets because they include that. Another way we could have written this was negative nine is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to negative one. Sorry, negative nine is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to negative one. So there's an example of graphing a trigonometric functions. So our next equation in front of us is y equals negative two cosine parentheses two x minus pi halves and your parentheses plus three. So we wanna go and graph this. The directions say find the amplitude, period, phase shift of each function, graph each function and be sure to label key points. Show at least two periods and verify your graph using the graphing utility. Okay, so looking at the following, let's pull out some key points. Here we can look at our amplitude. Our amplitude is gonna be the absolute value of negative two. So our amplitude, is equal to absolute value of negative two, which is two. So without any vertical shifts, I know my max is two and my min is negative two. But looking at this, I see I have a vertical shift. I have this plus three in here. So to figure out the max value, well, originally it was at two but now we're adding three to that to shift it up three units. And this will give us a value of five. And our min value before was negative two, but we're shifting it up three units. And so this is gonna give us back one. So we have our max and our min value on our graph. And we now wanna look at where a start and an end value of one period is. And so looking at our argument, we're gonna take this 2x minus pi halves, and we're gonna sandwich it in between zero and two pi. So I'm gonna add pi halves to both sides, or I just don't like to deal with fractions if possible. So for now, let's just multiply everything through by two and that will clear the one fraction. So two times zero, that's still zero, is less than or equal to this two times two x, which will give us four x, minus two times pi over two, which will just give us pi, the whole point was so to get rid of that denominator, is less than or equal to two times two pi, which is four pi. So instead, let's add pi to all sides of our inequality. And so we get pi is less than or equal to 4x, which is less than or equal to 4 pi plus pi gives me 5 pi. And dividing everything through by 4, we have pi force is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5 pi force. And so I noticed that pi force. So that's gonna be my phase shift. This is the start of one of my periods. So my phase shift is pi force. We can find the period by looking at the length of the the start to the end. So the period, or I guess we could use the formula. The period is equal to five pi force minus pi force, which is four pi force and four pi force is equal to pi. So we found those key points. And now let's look at 
the key points of one cycle of our period. So start one cycle at pi force. We're gonna end one of our cycles at pi pi force. Our halfway mark on that cycle is pi force plus five pi force times one half. So this is six pi force times one half. I noticed that too here and cancel with a six, leaving me with a three. So my halfway mark is three pi force. So quarter way mark, we're looking at pi force plus the halfway mark, three pi force, and multiplying it by one half. So that's four pi force times one half. So two goes into this four twice. So this is two pi force. Or pi halves. So it looks like here, pi force, two pi force, three pi force um, by Reasoning, I can see that my three quarter mark is four pi force, which is pi. So let's graph this. So plotting these values, we have pi force, pi halves, three pi force, pi, five pi force. It asked us to do two periods, wrap two periods. So let's just extend this a little bit. And so knowing that the intervals between each tick mark was pi force, so five pi force, then we would have six pi force, which is three pi halves. We would have seven pi force, eight pi force, and nine pi force. Min again, we said was at one. Max, we said was at five. So our midway line, the halfway mark between one and five is three. So treat like this was like the X axis. And we're starting with a cosine. So cosine does not start on the midway line. It either starts at the max or the min. Because of the minus in front of the two, I know I'm gonna start at my min. So at pi force, I'm hitting one. At pi halves, I'm hitting the midway line. Three pi force, I would hit the max. Pi, I would hit the midway line. Five pi force, I'm down to the min. And we wanted to do two periods, graph two cycles.
so not too bad. They're actually kind of fun. So let's, um, I'm just going to pull up Desmos. I'm going to pause the video, pull up the Desmos and show you that we would get the same thing. I'll put the video back on after I get the picture from Desmos on. So I just pulled up Desmos, desmos.com, and put in our trigonometric function, and we get the following graph. So let's look at our, our midway line, which we said was at three, something's wrong here. So that looks like the midway line. No, it's not. It just looks like it. Um, actually, let's look at the min. So notice our min, which we had said it started at pi force and we had a y value of one. And then over here, our max was at three pi force and we had five. It looks like we have the same graph in here. Three pi force, we hit five. Min was pi force. So we, we did this correctly. So now let's look at, if you're given the graph, finding the equation of the trigonometric function. So looking at the graph in front of us, we wanna find the equation of that graph. So looking at it, it's a sinusoidal curve. And so we can either make this as a cosine function or a sine function. I'm actually going to show both and show you that we'll get the same graph. So let's first start at, okay, let's see. We want to first look at one period. And so looking at one period, maybe starting with the max point. And then we have our min point and we have our max point. I noticed that, um, let's see. Here, if we think of this, 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 So it's hard to see what the, that number is. So, oops, that's not where I wanted this. So I see that this gives me the X value right here of 2.5, which means that this has to also be 2.5, that length. And so this would be negative 2.5. Um, so that would mean this is five and this is 7.5. So negative five. So we need to look at the length of the period and we need to look at as our vertical shifts and um, what the amplitude is. Okay. So this is kind of, maybe I should have not pulled this one. It just looks bizarre because looking at this as negative 10, this looks like it's negative eight, but Okay, this, this might not be the x-axis. Oh, yeah, this is not the x-axis. That's okay. So this is going down by twos. This is negative four. Okay, so let's look at the max value. And we're going to minus the min value. And we're going to divide it by two. And this is going to get us our, our value. So our max value here, which is at negative 3, minus our min value here, which is at negative 9. So minus negative 9. And we're going to divide that by 2. So negative three plus nine, that gives us six. Six divided by two is equal to three. 
So we know the absolute value of A is three. We'll talk about is that positive or negative, and it really depends on where we're starting. So if we start, actually, let's just start with a, a sign. Because looking at this, this is starting at the midway line. And let's figure out what that midline line is because that's how much we're shifting. So our midway line I'm looking at my max again, plus my min, so plus negative nine, and I'm dividing it by two. And so looking at this, negative three minus nine, that's negative 12. Negative 12 divided by two gives us negative six. Okay, so we're shifting things down six units. So if we thought of this as a cosine function, we have y is equal to, if we're thinking about cosine though, I'm sorry, sine. If we're thinking about sine, sine normally increases from the midway line of the start of a, a period, but we are decreasing. So to me, that tells me my A value, if I use sine and I start here, is gonna be negative. So we have negative amplitude, which is three. Sine, I'm not sure what B is. So BX, let's just do this, minus C. And then our shift, we just said it's shifting down six units, so minus six. If I'm starting here when X is zero, my C value is gonna equal zero. The only thing I need to figure out is what my value of B is. And so if I look at this graph and we have here and we, well, let's look at, we want a whole period in there. So let's just start our period. So it's when it starts repeating itself. So let's look at from negative five to five, that is gonna start repeating itself there. And so our period, is five minus negative five divided by two. So that's 10 over two, which is which is five. No, that doesn't make sense. Oh, I'm why I'm not dividing by two. Okay, which is length 10, which makes sense. If you look over from negative five to five, this has a length of 10. So we now know that by the formula for the period, recall period was equal to, so 10 is equal to two pi divided by B. So I can figure out what my B value is. If we multiply both sides by B, we have 10 B equals two pi. If we divide everything through by 10, we get pi, two pi over 10 reduces down to pi fifths. So I know my B value is pi fifths. My C value, if I think of it as starting the period actually here, is gonna be zero. And so we get Y is equal to negative three sine of B, which is pi over five, X, and then minus six. If we had said, okay, let's say we didn't decide to start here, 
right here when x was zero, and we started to decided to start when x was negative five. If that was the case, we would have had a phase shift because our start we would have said was negative five. So if that was the case, we would have had y is equal to negative three. Actually, it wouldn't have been negative though because we would be increasing there from the midway line, so positive three. Sine of pi over five x minus, actually it's gonna be um, plus five. And then our shift was minus six. So let's just look at that and show that we would get the same graph either way. So I'm gonna pause the recording for a minute while I pull that up and show. So we were on with our first equation. We were a little off on that second equation. And this is where this, um, this phase shift, and though it's shifting over negative five, we have to think about that formula again, the phase shift. Which we know was negative five. This was equal to our C value divided by B. If you look at our B value, we know our B is pi fifths. So we need to figure out what C is. So negative five is equal to C over pi fifths. So let's multiply both sides by pi fifths or divide both sides by pi fifths. And that would invert multiply. So notice our fives would cancel and C value is negative pi. So C value in here is minus a negative pi, which is plus pi. So there was another equation that would work for this. And if you pulled up Desmos, so in here, if we put minus pi, so the, the red graph is what our equation was, but if we put in here minus pi, you'll see that they're the same graph lying on the same thing. And this was the picture that I had given you before. And that was just choosing it to be sine. So there's an infinite number of equations, depending on where you decide to start one of your periods of what you can make that equation to look like. We can also make that look like a cosine function. So a cosine function, let's just do that really quickly and then we'll, we'll take a break. So cosine, we wanna either start at a max or a min. If we start with a max, then we're going to have a positive coefficient in front of the cosine. If we start at a min, then it's reflection and we would have a negative coefficient. The amplitude is the same. Amplitude is three, so that doesn't change for my cosine. So we have y is equal to, well, if we start here at that max, then we can say this is positive three cosine. Our period hasn't changed. Our period was pi over five. So pi fifths x. But our phase shift, our phase shift here is at negative 2.5. And so I know my phase shift, which is negative 2.5, 
And I'm going to rewrite that in terms of a mixed number. So that's negative 5 halves is equal to C over B. Again, we're just trying to figure out what C is in our case. We have negative 5 halves equals C all over pi fifths. Get rid of that fraction. Let's get C by itself and we can multiply both sides by pi fifths. And we would get that C is equal to fives cancel. So negative pi halves. So minus a negative, it's really gonna be plus pi halves. And we still have that vertical shift where we're shifting it down six units. So minus six. So if we graphed this, we should get the same thing. So plugging that last equation we had into Desmos, all three of these equations is the same graph. So it doesn't matter unless it tells you which trigonometric function to use. You can decide to use either sine or cosine. So let's look at one more problem where we're given information about our trigonometric function. This time it hasn't given us the graph, but it told us our amplitude is 6, our period is 8 pi, and we have a phase shift of negative 1 fifth. And from here, we want to write an equation, and it tells us it wants it to be a sine function. So really, what we need to do, we know because there's no vertical shift here, I know that this is going to be in the form of y equals a sine some bx minus c. And so our period, if we think about the formula for our period, period, which is eight pi, is equal to two pi divided by b. So I can figure out what b is. So let's multiply b on both sides of that equation. We get eight pi times b equals two pi. Divide both sides by eight pi. We have two pi divided by eight pi. And so B here is equal to one fourth. Now we need to figure out what C is. C, our phase shift, the formula, so negative one fifth, is equal to C divided by B. Well, negative one fifth, we found out what B was, is equal to C divided by B, which is one fourth. If I multiply both sides of the equation by one fourth to clear the fraction and get C by itself, we get that C is equal to negative one over 20. And our amplitude A is six. So we have Y is equal to six sine of B B we said was one fourth, one fourth X minus a negative one over 20. So minus a negative one over 20, instead of putting minus there, minus a negative is plus one over 20. So we found an equation of a sine function with the following properties.